Hey guys, I've got here a situation with this car about the coolant temperature sensor. There is a travel code which comes and goes. I will put over here a screenshot with the code. The problem with that code is that once I delete the check engine light, the code will not appear, will not trigger again, even though I start and stop the car a couple of times and I check the live data. It reads 13 degrees Celsius, which is quite accurate because we are inside here. So I have to find out what's the problem with this sensor because as you can see, it's reading a correct value, but still there is a trouble code related to the coolant temperature sensor. So we got to find out what's going on here. The owner of this car did not know when it triggered and he didn't check any live data before or after. So I got to figure out from that point that this OBD2 port, which is located down here, it has some problems. And if I want to see, for example, live data from more than three sensors, the information will be sent with delays, with a lot of delays, making it impossible to diagnose more complex problems. But for this sensor, it's okay, it still responds. I also check it out with the engine on and I could see that the temperature is rising slowly, slowly. So I got to find out what's wrong with this sensor because the check engine light was there and the code, it comes and goes sometimes. Under the hood, you're going to find the sensor right behind here, right where the tip of my finger is. That's the connector for the coolant temperature sensor. In order to make easy access to it, you got to take out the AGR valve. So that's what we're going to do next in order to get access to the sensor and do some bench test on it. So another symptom to be taken in consideration while doing this diagnosis is that the fan will start blowing on full speed if I turn the engine on right now from a cold position. The engine is cold and the fan will start. That will usually happen when the computer thinks that the coolant temperature sensor is not reading correct information or is not in reading any information at all. Therefore, for safety reasons, the fan will be on in order to prevent overheating the engine, which will totally damage the engine. So that's more like a programming made on the computer. However, as, as I showed you, you can see that the sensor is reading some information. So we've got a problem here. There's got to be something else going on here. So let's find out. All right, so let's remove this cover. We got to take out this metal pipe and this lower one metal pipe. Here it comes. Let's take it out like that. Finally, you can see a little bit better the sensor, which is down there. Use a hook like this to unplug the connector. The connector is out. And now if you look down there around the sensor, you've got a seed clip. So take some sort of long plier, catch it up from the back and remove it. Obviously try to not lose it. This is the seed clip. And now you should be able to wiggle the sensor out. Of course, from this point, make sure that the coolant is out. Take it out like that. Next, I'm going to do a test on this sensor. And if you look down there, you can see that the pins have letters. I'm going to connect the voltmeter to pin A and B. I have the voltmeter on 2000 ohms. And you can see we've got the resistance down there, which should change once the temperature is changing. So I'm going to use a torch and heat up the sensor while watching the values let's see as you can see i put the flame on it but the reaction is late so there is something wrong with this sensor because once i put the flame through the sensor the resistance should decrease immediately there shouldn't be a delay and there is a delay down there this is a confirmation that the sensor is bad as you can see And since the sensor is delaying, it's quite hard to determine if it's accurate as well. So this is again, this is a clear confirmation. You need to replace the sensor. Down here is the part number if you need it. Place the rubber gasket on and spray some silicone lubricant on it. And now you're going to be able to press the sensor on. Just make sure that this little lip, just make sure that this little lip will sit on this side so you can plug in the connector. Now let's install this sear clip. All right, now the sensor is secured. 
and you're good to go on installing back everything you removed. All right, so that was kind of a live diagnosis I made for you. I'm pretty sure that once that sensor is replaced, the code will never trigger again. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos about this Audi A6, I'm going to put a link in the description below with the playlist I made. And until next time, drive safe so I can see you soon.